Turn with me to the book of Hebrews. Book of Hebrews, chapter number 11. And y'all will recognize this chapter because we mentioned it last week when we preached on hope deferred and uh, just really haven't been able to get away from this chapter. I told you last week that's one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. Uh, it's the chapter of faith, uh, the roll book of faith, if you will. And it goes through several that uh, had faith in God, and God used them to do mighty and miraculous uh, things and to uh, further God's kingdom, if you will, and, and just to um, really <laughs> save God's people. Save uh, humankind, if you will. God used people that had faith in Him. And we sometimes, it seems like especially in the last few years, we discredit or maybe we don't put enough emphasis on faith that we need to. Um, we're almost in a, a faith drought, if you will. Um, we talk about a lot of things in church, and we even talk about faith some, but do we ever really stop and think about what it means to have faith or to put faith in God? Uh, we, we like to put faith in a whole lot of things. But it seems like, and I may be just speaking... Uh, on myself sometimes, but sometimes we use faith as a last resort instead of the first thing, uh, or our first thought, if you will. But faith comes after we've tried everything else, and maybe it hasn't worked. But we'll put faith in other entities besides God so quick, so many times. Uh, I think about, you know, if, if we were hungry, you know, there's a lot of nations in this world, you wake up and you don't know what you're going to have for breakfast, you don't go to the refrigerator and open it up and say, do I want this, do I want this, or do I want this? It's, I wake up, I wonder if I can eat today. And we put our faith, if we're hungry, we say, we got grocery stores, Right? They've got food, and if they don't have food, we got restaurants. What happens when all that runs out? Or you're not able to go there? Because that's coming. According to the book of Revelation. You can't put your faith in the grocery stores or the restaurants. You better put it in God. For where your next meal is going to come from. We look at being sick. And who do we most of the time first put our faith in? Doctors and hospitals. Our first thought, and, and listen, I'm so thankful for uh, the doctors and nurses and the hospitals and all those things. And we mentioned it many, many times before. But listen, they can only do so much. We ought to put our faith in in God that can heal the body. He may use the doctor to do it, but we need to put our faith in Him. Amen? What about uh, money? We put our faith in money. What money can buy, what money can do. What happens when the money's out? We got plastic, right? Put our faith in plastic. You know, I, I think there's a reason our founding fathers, or whenever it was made a law, it might not have been at the beginning, uh, I think it was years on down the road, uh, but they put on our coins and on our dollar bills, <coughs> trust in God. Why do you think that is? I think it goes back to the Bible because they wanted to know or wanted the people to know that don't put your faith and your trust in this coin or in this bill, but put it in God first. So in God we trust. What about 
when threat of danger comes around? Who do we put our faith in? Government. Everybody in this Bible say amen to that. What's the government going to do to protect us on this? If another nation is, is, is threatening with us, we look to our government. If, you know, we've seen it the past uh, year and a half, nearly two years uh, with the COVID thing. We put our faith in government to protect us from whatever threatens us that it might hurt us instead of looking to God who is our rock of defense, who is our fortress, who is our help, our very present help in time of need, we need to put our faith back in God. But we have substituted so many things for faith in God. And let me just say, I'm not saying all those things are in, in, in inherently bad. You know, I'm thankful that we have a government that when a foreign nation comes against us, they can raise the military and, and can defend us and protect us. I'm thankful for that. But we have to realize it is God ultimately that is our defense, that is our help, that is our healing, that is our provider, that is our all in all. We're so quick to put our faith in other things besides the Lord Jesus Christ. So I want to read now in Hebrews chapter number 11. And we just want to read verse number 6. And Lord willing, uh, unless he changes things and adds somewhere else, verse number 6, will, well 5 and 6, will be the only place that we will probably turn to today. But in verse 5 it says, By faith Enoch was translated, that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation he had his testimony that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek God. Him. Bow with me for a word of prayer. <coughs> Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this day, for that grace and mercy that you bestow on us. And Lord God, we just thank you for being with us, Lord. When we sure don't deserve anything that comes our way, Lord, that is good. Lord, I just can't help but think about that song. That your grace, your mercy, your forgiveness, your love ran after us. Even when we were running from you. And Father, I'm just thankful for that today. And Lord God, I ask that you forgive me of my sins. God, in my lack of faith so many times or my putting faith in other things before you, Lord. And Father, I just pray that you would cleanse me that I can be used by you this morning, Lord. God, just preach your word through these lips. And Father God, I just pray that our faith might be increased. Lord, that it, it might grow stronger and stronger these troublesome and trying times, but Lord, I'm also reminded the only way for our faith to grow is for us to exercise it. And Lord, that's not always a pleasant thing, but Lord, give us your grace when we are exercising our faith, Lord. And God, I just ask you now, especially for those in here today that might be not saved, Lord. God, I pray today would be the day that their faith in you begins. God, draw them, that Holy Spirit of conviction, to a place of repentance that they call on you and put their faith in you and be saved before it's everlasting too late. Lord, we just love you now. We thank you and ask you to just work in this place today. Your goodwill and your pleasure, Lord. 
Lead, guide, and direct every heart that's here. Bring us in a closer relationship with you. Forgive me, Lord, once again. In Jesus' name, amen. We want to look at, at this verse, uh, but, you know, we talked about last week how uh, that our faith is all intermingled and intertwined with our hope uh, of, of what is to come, uh, what we have now, but what is especially to come, what God has done uh, in our hearts. And we realize and we know uh, that we are saved by grace through faith. And that not of ourselves, it's a gift of God, uh, not of works, lest any man should boast. We are saved by grace, but it's all through the working of faith. And when we are saved, as we read last week in verse number uh, one or two up there, listen, when we have faith, we it produces evidence that we have faith. And as you go down through Hebrews chapter 11, it starts to mention people uh, that live by faith, and you can see the evidence of their faith by the miracles that was wrought, by the things that were done, uh, by, the, by the deliverances that was had. Our lives ought to be marked by those same things if we are a people of faith, and we claim faith. If you're a child of God here today, you claim faith. Amen? See, I've got faith in God. Listen, if you, if, if you claim to be a Christian and you don't claim faith, then you might not have what you thought you had because you have to have faith in order to be saved. Amen? So all of us that are saved especially, we have faith. But faith does not end with initial salvation. In other words, right when you got saved, you were born again. Faith doesn't stop right then. Listen, it's really the beginning of your faith. And then your faith should grow uh, throughout the years and throughout the trials and throughout uh, all the things that comes your way. You learn how to trust and to lean on God, not just for salvation, uh, but for the healing when sickness comes, but for the defense when uh, violence comes your way, uh, but for the provisions when money is short. You start to learn all those things. Your faith starts to get exercised. And it grows. We read here in verse number 5. And I wanted to read verse 5. Because it really sets the stage. Uh, for verse number 6. Because it talks about Enoch. And Enoch was uh, in the Old Testament. A uh, long time ago. Uh, towards the beginning. And Enoch is a special character now. A special person. He had to have some great faith. And we don't read it. It's an amazing thing that you don't read but just a few little verses about Enoch at all. We don't know much details about his life, but what we can gather about his life is that he had a great faith in God. Because it says down here that by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Now, there's only been two people that I'm aware of that I can remember in the Bible that has not tasted death. Enoch and then Elijah. They were both just caught up to be with God in glory. And that translated means transferred. He was transferred from the position on earth to a position in heaven. Amen. Wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't it be something to have that much faith that before, now before the resurrection, and I want you to understand this before, you know, we all look forward to that time when God comes again and splits the eastern sky wide open. We preached about it a little bit last week and He uh, opens up the graves and we all go up and those that are alive and remain uh, will be caught up together to meet Him in the air. Uh, that's going to be uh, something that we ought to look forward to. That hasn't happened yet. 
Enoch was one that he had so much faith in God. I can just uh, picture he was out walking with God one day, talking with him, and he was out walking. He said, and now this is just me, you know, adding into it here. It may not be right or what, but God says, you know what, Enoch, won't you just come on home? I mean, that's basically what happened. Enoch was out uh, doing his thing, just trusting and praising and believing in God. And God said, you might as well just come on up here right now. Don't have to taste death. Don't have to go through the agony and the suffering and all those things associated with death. Same way he called Elijah up in the chariot of fire. But it wasn't because Enoch was some special person. It wasn't because Enoch was uh, high in stature amongst all the people or whatever. It was because he had faith in God and that faith pleased God. For he got a special privilege not many people has gotten. Like I said, only one other so far. And that was Elijah. And it says here that for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. And that set the stage for verse number 6, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now it's inferred there that Enoch, Enoch uh, fit all those criteria that he had faith, that he believed, and that he diligently sought after God, and it pleased God to the fact or to the extent that he caught Enoch on up to be with him in glory. Now, as I read this verse, I want to pick this verse apart just a little bit. You know how I am with definitions, so we got a few of them here. <clears throat> The first one we have, at the very beginning of that verse it says, but without faith it is impossible. So we got to define faith to start with. Faith is a reliance upon. Reliance upon. Faith is a lot more than just words. Faith is an action as well. Faith is more than me just going over here to Brother Brent and saying, I, I got faith, brother. So, all right. Show me. The example was given one time uh, about uh, a high wire stretch across Niagara Falls. And this a uh, famous tightrope walker said he's going to walk across this little tightrope across Niagara Falls. And the people was asked, said, do you have faith that he can do it? Oh, yeah, of course, sure he can do it. He's done it so many times before. He can do it, no problem. He said, do you really have faith he can do it? Do you think he could push a wheelbarrow across this tightrope as he walked no problem for this man. He's so good. He can do it. No problem. He can push that wheelbarrow across there. I've got faith in him. And then they were asked, you say you have faith in him, that he could do it, no problem. Now get in the wheelbarrow. <laughs> See, that's really what faith is. It's not just saying somebody can do something. It's not just saying God can do it, that God can handle it. It's trusting him by jumping in with him, if you will, by getting in the wheelbarrow with him. Faith is a reliance and a trust in. It's so much more than just words that we speak or that we pray or that we preach or that we sing on Sunday morning. Amen. It is actions in our everyday life that shows that we have full reliance on God. How many of us are right there? How many of us are in the wheelbarrow? I'd be a liar if I said I was. Because I'm not there all the time either. 
Sometimes I'm a little closer to the wheelbarrow than at other times. And there's been a few times that I can say and look back on my life and say I got in the wheelbarrow. But there's a lot fewer than I would care to admit. A lot fewer times. So faith is a reliance upon. I'm going to tell you it's the key to salvation. You cannot be saved if you don't have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't just say that I believe that I have faith. You have got to put your trust in Him. So many that has come to the altar over and over again are, are struggled with salvation. The biggest issue is that right there. They have not put all their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ yet. Because I'm going to say with the authority of the Scripture, as soon as they do that, they'll be saved like that. Amen? Because He requires our faith in Him. So going on a little bit. Uh, the next one we go to, want to go to it says, But without faith, it is impossible, which just simply means not possible, to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe. Must believe. Now, believe means to put your trust in. See, faith is full reliance, and believe is to put your trust in. So you're going to put your trust in Him and then have full reliance on Him. We have to believe. And this is where so many people, uh, listen, believing is, is different uh, because faith works with that. Uh, the devils, the Bible says, they believe and they tremble. Believe goes beyond just knowing about someone. Believing goes beyond just thinking, yeah, God exists. Because you know what? Ever since I was little, we wasn't brought up in church very much. We, we went a little bit until I was uh, maybe five, six years old. Uh, I remember of church just a handful of things. I believe we talked about a few weeks ago. One was Kool-Aid and cookies, and the other one was communion service. And I didn't get any of that group, uh, grape juice or the little cracker. And that's almost the extent of church that I could remember. But I believed up here that God existed. Of course He did. But I was not saved until I believed here. Until I knew it here. You see, believing that God exists is not quite enough. You have to fully trust Him, put your faith in Him, and reliance in Him. That's what a biblical belief means. Not just here, but here. We put our trust in Him. And it says that, For he that cometh to God must believe that He is. That He is. I said not just that he exists, but that he is. That he's what? Well, you've got to believe in the Trinity, for one. You may not understand it, but we believe that there is God the Father, there is God the Son, Jesus Christ, our mediator uh, that came to earth to die on the cross uh, so that we could be saved. To pay for our sins. And we believe in the Holy Spirit of God. That guides us and leads us. For one that brings us to Him. And shows us what faith is. See we have to believe that He is. He is our Savior. And we have to believe that He is love. That He loves us enough to die for us. We have to believe uh, that He is the one who offers us forgiveness. have to believe that He is the one who can give us peace. We have to believe that He is the Lord of all creation. That He is the Master. That He is the self-existing one. The one uh, that was the uncaused cause.
calls the one that was not created by mankind, but the one who created mankind. The one that we believe will take us home to be with him in glory forever and ever. We have to believe and we have to have faith. It says, without faith, it is impossible to believe, to, to uh, let me just go back and read it. Without faith, it is possible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. I was reminded of two different accounts in the Bible as I was uh, reading this and thinking about faith and thinking about believing. Uh, the first one was dealing with faith and the putting your reliance upon. And you remember in the Bible where there was a young rich man that came to Jesus and said, you know, good teacher, good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And of course Jesus knew this man's heart and he said, well, you keep this commandment, this commandment, this commandment, oh, and defraud not too. And this young man said, I've done all this from my youth up. He's thinking, I'm a shoe in. I got this thing wrapped up. If that's the requirements, I've done all of those. Of course, he was lying to not just Jesus, but to himself as well. And that's why Jesus threw in the defraud knot. Makes me wonder how he got a lot of his wealth. And Jesus said, okay, you think you've done all that? You lack one thing. Go sell everything you have, give it to the poor, and follow me. You see, that was the, the separation there. Follow me. Sell what you have and follow me. And the Bible says that this man went away sorrowful because he had great possessions. What did he have his trust and reliance in? Was it Jesus? Nope. It was in himself, what he had done, and his possessions. See, Jesus got down to the meat of it. He said, you don't have faith in me yet. Because your faith, your reliance is still in yourself and all these other things. And then I thought about on the believing. I thought about the other familiar account in the Bible where there was a Pharisee and a publican that went into the uh, temple to pray and the, the, the Pharisee uh, stood up there and, and wasn't humble at all and he uh, just was proud when he said, uh, God, I thank you that I'm not like this poor wretched sinner over here, but I, I tithe, I give my alms, I'm you know good to little old ladies and, and, and you know I've done all these good things that I'm not like this sorry old person over here. Then it said the publican, the sinner, wouldn't even lift his eyes up to heaven, but he smote upon his breast. He said, God, forgive me, a sinner. And Jesus asked the question, who do you think went down to his house justified? This Pharisee or the publican, the sinner? He said the sinner did. Because you see, this Pharisee, he believed there was a God. I kind of think he believed he was it. I might be wrong on that. But he sure acted like he was it. He sure didn't have that full trust and belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. He was believing in what he could do, his works, his merit, and what all of that made him what he thought looked good. And Jesus said, the sinner went home justified because he didn't just believe in the existence of God, but he put his faith and trust in not himself or, or anybody else, but he put his faith and trust in the one who could take away his sins. If you're in here today and you're lost, listen, that's what you've got to do to be saved as well. Humble yourself, seek him, have faith, 
and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ that He is. That, number one, if, if He is calling you to repentance, and I believe the brother said something along his lines a couple weeks ago, if He is calling you to salvation, He is not doing that to toy with you and just to make a mockery of you. If He calls you to salvation, He's calling you to save you. And that's the only reason. He's calling you to save you. You have to believe that He is able to save you. I'll never forget talking with a man. And as men would look at sin, we would look at him as a vile sinner. I'm just going to be straight up honest with you. He done a lot of rotten things. A lot of bad things. As I was at his house talking with him one day, he owned up to it and said, I don't think God could save me. Because of all the bad things he had done, he said, I don't think God could save me. And then I talked to him about Paul. <laughs> Paul had how many people murdered at his own hands, put to death at his word. What happened to Paul? He got saved. He preached the gospel. And a lot of what's recorded down is Paul's words that we read every Sunday. If God can save Paul, He can save anybody. If He can save me, He can save anybody. Amen? This man finally wound up believing and getting saved. And it wasn't long after that he died. But I expect to see him in glory one day. We have to believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now I want to talk about diligently seek first. <clears throat> before we come back to the rewarder. Diligently seek means to search out. To crave. And to worship. To search out and to crave. It's not just a, Jesus over there? Eh, no, I don't see him. And then you turn and go the other way. Salvation over there? I don't see it, so I'm going to go turn and go the other way. That's not diligently seeking Him. Listen, when you get to a place where I did and where anybody that's ever been saved got to, it was, I've got to be saved or die. If you come to a place where you know there's nothing else that's going to satisfy your soul and you then begin to diligently seek Him. It's not just with a haphazard glance to try to find Jesus. It's it's Jesus or die. Jesus or else. Jesus or I'm undone. Jesus or hell. And you search Him out. The thing is, the Bible says in many places that you search for Him and you seek Him and He's not far from you. That's the thing. It's not a, a big hunting expedition where you've got to go search for years and years and years. Uh, listen, He is very near to you. If you'll open up them spiritual eyes and look at Him. To search out and to crave. Anybody ever craved anything in here? Amen. Amen. When, uh, and I won't get into it much, but I know when some ladies get pregnant, they can crave stuff. And they can crave some weird stuff. And that's all I'll say about that right at this moment. But I'm going to tell you, when they crave stuff, you better find the stuff. Or we look at it even now, when the hot sign goes up, right? You didn't know you needed a donut until the hot sign goes on. And then you realize, I need a donut. 
Then sometimes you're going past it on the interstate and you'll turn around and go back because you're craving it now. And sometimes your husband just keeps on driving and gets in trouble. We've all craved something at some time or another. Amen. And when you really get to craving something, you will move heaven and earth to find it or to get it. Whether it might be the perfect steak or shrimp or whatever, we think, I don't know why we think about food, I guess because we're Baptists, we think about food and cravings most of the time. But it's like nothing is going to stop you till you get what you are craving. Listen, I wish to God that that's what everybody would feel and experience when it's time to seek God. That it was, I'm not going to stop at anything. Until I get to God. Until I see Him. Until I see His blessings. Until I see His salvation. Until I see whatever the need is in my life met through God. We don't have revival a lot of times. And listen, revival is coming up in a couple weeks or a week. And we don't have it because we are not craving Him. Because when we get to craving Him, we will stop at nothing. Oh, praying in the morning? That, that ain't nothing when you're craving Him. I'll do whatever it takes. I'll pray. I'll get up an hour early and pray to God uh, just so I can see more of Him. Well, you know what else is going on during the day? You know how hard it's going to be for me to get to revival? If you are truly craving Him, You'll do everything in your power to make that day work out to where you can meet with Him when you need to meet with Him. You say, well, it's, it's a school night. And I can't stay out that late. We might be there till 10 o'clock. Who knows? If you're craving God, diligently seeking Him, 10 o'clock would be nothing. I... I I've stayed in some revival services up close to midnight before. And you all think, well, that's something new. We stay till midnight and we see some great things of the Lord going on and uh, we still got up and went to work the next day and then went to revival. And then I hear the old timers speaking. <laughs> and I don't think they ever left that night. Stayed there until dawn. Seeking God and seeking revival. And then you hear about uh, uh, dozens getting saved. I wonder why that is. Let's do some quick math right quick. You can even use your fingers. You've got men and women that are craving God, that will do anything to have God just meet with them in a mighty way, and that equals a mighty blessing of God in a mighty meeting. Salvation to souls in a church brought back on fire for God. Diligently seeking Him. That He is, we kind of got into this a little bit, a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. When we diligently seek Him, we crave Him, we do everything we can to see Him. That's when God will bless us and God will uh, save people and God will revive the church. He is a rewarder. So what is a rewarder? What's He going to reward you with? Grace. I don't know how many times in my life that I've been in a bad place and then had to just diligently seek God more than my normal just, you know, we send up a hallelujah prayer. We almost a Hail Mary prayer, not, not like the, the Catholic ones would use. I'm not saying like that, but we just kind of, God, if you see fit through this, that's what I'm saying. You know, you just kind of toss it up there and hoping something happens. When we get in some places, we'll stay and we'll pray, and we'll get serious with God. 
like Jacob of old did when he wrestled with God all night long. He said, I'm not turning loose. I need this blessing. I'm going to meet my brother. My brother's going to kill me the moment he sees me. And all that is mine. Lord, I need you. And he sought the Lord all night long. To leave in his body was give out. The Lord put it out. And then God blessed him. And him and his brother met and hugged. Everything was well between them. He gives us grace. He gives us mercy. What else does He give us? Forgiveness, salvation, acceptance, heaven. Lost friend, if you're here today and the Lord is dealing with your heart at all, I would pray that you get serious with God. That you diligently seek Him and just know that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. What is your reward? It is what we just mentioned, that grace, that mercy, that salvation, that forgiveness. Heaven. Which, quite frankly, it's Jesus. If you didn't get nothing else, that's enough, ain't it? Amen? <clears throat> As I was thinking about this thought, without faith, What would we do without faith? I can tell you, all of us in here today, without faith, we would all go to hell. In a hurry. We all have a measure of faith given to us by God. But I want to say, what do we put our faith in? And not just what do we put our faith in, but who do we put our faith in? It used to be a time that it didn't matter which profession you were in. You put your faith in God to take care of that profession. And I think about a farmer. Many farmers in here. Would any farmer ever put the first kernel of corn in the ground if they didn't have faith? I'm going to tell you, it takes a lot of faith to be a farmer. The Bible even says that. It says by faith they sow, they put that seed in the ground and then it dies and it brings forth more fruit. I don't know how anybody can farm without having faith in God. What about, I think we mentioned at the beginning, doctors. I don't see anybody can be a doctor without faith in God. To see the intricacies of the human body and how it just heals and can repair. We look at it, repair and heal itself, but we know that God is the designer of it, and it's by God's grace that He does those things. I think about teachers, and we've got people that work in the school system in here. Would you do your job if you didn't have any faith? That you were going to make a difference? some young person's life. Social workers, would you do your job if you didn't think you were going to make a difference? That God might use you somehow to touch someone. I'm not going to say you can't do all those jobs without faith in God because it can be done and it has been done. Faith in God makes it so much better. Gives you a purpose. Gives you a reason. Gives you a drive to keep on doing it. Sometimes when things look impossible. Because you see, 
Faith goes beyond possible. Faith moves beyond what is possible. It lets you see God do the impossible. I believe in Sunday school, a verse was even read about that this morning. That with God, nothing is impossible. Salvation is impossible without God. It's been tried over and over and over with always the same result. No salvation without God. But you see, faith makes salvation possible. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Brother Terry, you can get your song together. We want to have an invitation this morning. If you're here today and you are not saved as of yet, you need to start with faith. And when you start with faith, You'll learn that's all you need to begin with. Faith will show you everything you need to do. Faith will allow God to show you that you need to come to Him. Repent to Him. Trust and believe Him. And be saved. Faith will allow you to know when you are saved. We're going to stand and we're going to sing this morning. And I just want this thought on your heart. Without faith, it is impossible to please God.